Yeah, it looks like our runners are off. Forest spot very early on. Uh, also, town. Didn't get a quick look at that. Zarnax looks like he's headed for that cave up to the north, and it's important to do exploration of the map early on. Once you know what all of your options are, it makes it a lot easier for you to make decisions. And Zarnax has found Death Mountain, and he's going to go dig through there. Victor takes a death. And uh, Thurwolf decides he's going to skip Death Mountain, so Zarnax the only one who is digging in that right now, and we'll have to see whether that pays off or not. Looks like uh, Thurwolf and Victor just found the raft. And they just have to figure out how to make it off of the screen alive. Some pretty nasty enemies uh, guarding that item there. A finding Rudo decides to skip out on that. Uh, also find Saria and we'll pick up the mirror and return that and we'll see what magic is available in this town. And an early shield. Pretty nice. <clears throat> Excuse me. Pretty nice to have. Looks like Thurwolf has made it to life 3 already, uh, being pretty efficient with the level ups. And Thurwolf is going to take a walk south, and we'll get to see what's at that point on the map. Zarnax still digging Death Mountain. And poor Thurwolf just has to deal with this large mob of enemies in front of him slinging projectiles and uh, takes a death there. We'll see if he takes another shot at that cave. Uh, meanwhile, Zarnax still crawling through Death Mountain. And Victor is going to pick up uh, his copy of... Ooh, Zarnax finds the Power Glove in Death Mountain, so totally worth it to dig that out. And Victor will pick up his shield. Looks like AA has found uh, Raru and is going to pick up the free spell. Picks up Fairy, a very, very good pickup as that leads to quite a few 
uh, additional options, but very, very expensive at magic level 1, may not have enough magic points to cast that yet. So after a couple level ups, uh, he'll be able to take advantage of that, but not right now. And Victor finds a heart container uh, in a relatively vanilla location. We got Zarnax digging out a cave, and we'll see if he comes up with anything relatively worthwhile. Ooh, finds the finds the kid. So he can get some magic as soon as he uh, returns that child to uh, her to his uh, rightful parent. So like uh, Zarnax wanted to grab some experience off of that enemy, ends up taking a death instead, but has enough to get another level relatively soon. Skipping out on the blue moblins though, and Victor heading into a palace right now. And it looks like... So I could see either three or six. And uh, AA now has enough points in magic uh, where he can get the item. And Mido. Excuse me, not the item, the downstab. One of the uh, most critical things to pick up in a Zelda 2 run. Opens up a lot more options in combat. Totally worth uh, picking up as soon as you can get it. Zarnax digs out a pea bag. And Thurwolf finds a magic container. Like uh, Victor's gonna take another run at this palace. Oof! Loses the fight against the Iron Knuckle. Good experience though. Hundred a pop. And uh, Zarnax and AA both with. Attack level 3, Thurwolf with attack level 2, and Victor still at attack level 1. Just gets 2 right now, so these Iron Knuckle fights uh, proving to be very important for Victor. And now AA rescues the kid. Thurwolf once again meets his demise on that bridge. And now Zarnax is going to go cash in that mirror and pick up shield.
So far, uh, 10 minutes in, the big pickups, uh, the raft has been in one of the graveyard spots, the glove is on Death Mountain, and the kid is in one of the item caves. Haven't seen uh, what exchanging the kid uh, leads to, but as soon as the runners find that town, I'm sure, uh, I'm sure we'll find out. Victor checking out the north part of the map now, uh, and he's going to take a look at this desert tile. Finds a pea bag. Under it. And Zarnax is going to pick up a very vanilla heart container. And then stop into Raru and pick up Fairy. And AA picks up uh, a magic container. It looks like uh, Victor found the other of three or six. Ooh, 200 key bag. And there is the down stab for Zarnax. Victor taking a death. And right now, AA finds either one or four. And he's going to dig this one out. So it's looking, uh, looking like one. Meanwhile, Thurwolf is going to pick up some levels off of this iron knuckle outside of three or six. A not even bothering to check out the uh, what the drippers have. And Victor's going to pick up Downstab, so good assortment of spells early on. AA able to ferry through that key lock door. Ooh, nice move to pick up the key. Oh, takes a death though, getting uh, just projectile spammed off of the bridge. And Thurwolf, having found Raru, is going to pick up Fairy shortly. Zarnax ends up uh, meeting an untimely death in the swamp. And it looks like AA is not giving up on this dungeon quite yet. 
probably reached the end of a long path and decides he's going to take the other way. And, uh, hey, a 200p bag on the way through, not a bad prize. Especially when you can get set up to get uh, attack level 5 after placing the gem. Victor making it through the uh, Bridge of Doom. And Zarnax finds P-Bag. It looks like Victor found the raft, so I may have been uh, incorrect in the original location of that raft, but Thurwolf and Victor both have that now. And Thurwolf is also going to pick up Downstab right now. Like Zarnax is trying to get on top of that uh, that cliffside there. Not having much luck right now, though. It's almost out of life points. AA set up for this boss fight, and it's horse head. Said dropping a paltry 30 experience, but placing the gem in Palace 1 is going to give him exactly what he needs to get attack level 5. And every uh, attack level you have that's better than your opponent's, it makes the game that much easier. Palace one down, and A is going to use the raft to uh, get to the next continent. Check what's up. Uh, check out what's up over there. Sarnax with the slow slog to a town. And finds Darunia. So, lots of stuff for uh, Zarnax to do here. He's going to pick up the upstab first. Uh, neat trick with the fairy spell. You can hold down as you cast it, and that down uh, action will be buffered and you can just go right through the chimney that way. So, up stab, down stab, glove for Zarnax. Uh, blocks are not going to be a problem for him. And AA finds Palace. Looks like either two or five, and he's just going to skip it. And Thurwolf also finds a palace, and this one is either three or six. Uh, could be three. And he decides he's going to try to dig this out. Thank you. 
Zarnax picks up a spell, but unfortunately I missed what that was. Next time he goes into the menu, I will definitely keep an eye out for it. And Thurwolf, without the glove, cannot progress any further. Finding a pea bag in the desert and is set up. Uh, ooh, there's a river devil hanging out there, so this may be flute required. And he also finds a town. And he can get the spell in Darunia. As well as the upstep. So Zarnax is going to take this time to explore the uh, upper right corner of the map. Haven't seen too many people head up there, if at all. And AA is going to return the child and picks up the spell for his trouble. And that spell is... The Life Spell. So Shield and Life both uh, very useful at uh, extending your ability to make it through dungeons. Runners have to be very happy about finding those. Uh, this is a Thunderbird required seed though, so they still need to uh, dig thunder out from one of the towns. Yeah, it looks like Zarnax found an item, but I didn't catch which one it was. Uh, may have been boots, judging from that quick look. Pretty good find for digging that cave out, and he can go right to a single tire tile water spot and uh, grab that as well. Also finds new Casuto and uh, realizes, well, he's going to need two more magic containers if he wants to get anything here. fills instead. Meanwhile, Thurwolf runs into another palace where he is glove blocked. And he's not gonna be happy once he goes through Death Mountain. And Zarnax finds the Thunder spell. So two out of the three uh, big magic items that you look for.
And yeah, the uh, the management of experience is uh, one of the trickier portions. Uh, and the amount of risk that you take also directly correlates to uh, how confident you are in your combat uh, abilities as well. Looks like Nirm uh, has been rotated in here. Uh, thanks to uh, Narestra and the Randomania crew for uh, reacting to the... Uh, the off-stream runner's progress, and Nirm uh, finds Old Casuto. And then finds Jerunia. Or is that just Raru and... Oh. Nope, that's Naburu, and uh, I was thrown for a bit by that, uh, that purple haze. And Nirm finds Jump, and already has Thunder, so we'll get uh, his tracker caught up here. Not sure what gems Nirm has placed, but uh, at attack level 4 he may not have cleared a dungeon yet. And Thurwolf is digging Death Mountain right now. Nirm finds a heart look like uh wasn't sure which one that was. Magic key at the desert tile. Cool, thank you, Hefe. Near finding a fairy too. So very fortunate. But he has explored a lot of territory. And looks like he's just going to ferry across this room. Much quicker to do that. And AA finds fire. Also has thunder. So AA, Zarnax, and Nier making pretty good time. Thurwolf, uh, unfortunately, finding a dead end in Death Mountain. And AA is going to pick up the magic key on the desert tile and finds a palace. And this one is four, since we have already seen a clear one. And he's going to dig this one out. And uh, looks like the... Uh, the fire spell has some interesting uh, abilities today. And of course the blue iron knuckles uh, always getting in the way. And the item is Heart Container. So, not exactly what you're looking for, but you're not going to say no to that when you are one hit away from death. Zarnax picking up the spell in Kasudo. And Thurwolf finds his glove. And 
And now Zarnax is going to trade in that water for the fire spell. So far, AA, Zarnax, and Nier all making pretty good time. Their wolf uh, a little bit behind because of the glove blocks and what I believe are three and six. Just too quick for me to check out uh, what those uh, items he has are on the tracker, but he's going to pick up his down stab now. And Thurwolf is now with the glove in tow, can make some progress in this dungeon. Zarnax also finding the heart container and just decides to bounce for now. And there we go. We'll get to see what the glove was protecting here. And looks like Nirm uh, falls through the pit, and uh, so Nirm's found the hammer and finds what I believe is a magic container. And seven was the uh, magic number, so he can pick up that spell uh, whenever he gets around to it. Zarnax picking up another heart container as well as Nirm. So Nirm's uh, exploration of the overworld paying off. Uh, once he decides to dip dungeons, he's going to have uh, you know fairly easy time with all of the health and magic resources available. And Thurwolf has to close this fight out against this blue iron knuckle who just does not want to walk towards the edge of the screen. Attack 6 for AA, big pickup. And we have try number 2 against the Blue Iron Knuckle for Thurwolf. Crouching in time with the music. AA throwing out the spell spell, and we'll see what this leads to. Red Jar, worst prize. And Thurwolf is having a little bit better of a go right now, just a couple of hits away. Takes him out this time. And it looks like he got a substantial amount of experience, but not 
quite enough, uh, elects to just take the magic 3 to magic 4 amount of experience rather than getting uh, attack level 4. Probably was not expecting to get a giant pile of experience from that enemy. And just takes. Uh, so 3, 4, 5. A little bit awkward. Uh, but the next time he places a gem, he'll definitely be able to get attack level 4. And he's going back in, uh, having not found the item. AA, meanwhile, running through Maze Island. And Maze Island has 5. And A is just gonna look for a couple more drops. Meanwhile, Niren picks up Reflect. So as far as magic goes, he's all set. Very well stocked to start clearing dungeons. And he's just going to bulldoze that boulder. Keep right on moving. And Nirm is now entering either 3 or 6. And judging from the size of this, probably 6. Zarnax taking a death. But with 8 heart containers, should be able to make it through this dungeon. Thurwolf dug out the item out of the palace, uh, Palace 3, I believe, but I did not get to see what it was. Flute in 3. Thank you, Hefe. And Zarnax finishing off uh, that boss for a ton of experience. Now, time for round two. So right now, everybody converging on the same palace. Sarnax digs the item out, and it's a heart container. Or excuse me, a magic container. And we have AA diving into either 2 or 5. My guess is this is 2. Zarnax taking the drop while Nirm fights the horse rider.
uh, near and pretty close to death, but looks like he uh, manages to get the drop on him. And after these uh, these back-to-back -back fights, he's going to be loaded with experience. Near him getting attack 5 off of the back of those two enemies. And it's just gonna leave. Zarnax almost taking a dip in the lava. Nice recovery there. And Thurwolf runs all this way for a key. Tricky enemy grouping there. Nirm's just going to skip over it by using the fairy spell. And Zarnax fighting the boss of six right now. No swag strats, playing it safe. It looks like AA decided to head out of there. Zarnax setting the gem in six. Magic six, life six, attack four. Now, Nirm's turn. Make short work of the boss of six. Thousand points from that boss, but unfortunately, Nirm's only going to get about 110 experience off of placing this gem. But no sense in uh, going back. And he's going to restock his life total and then leave. Ah, uh, yes, Glove was in Hammer Cave. Yep, that was a uh, mismark on my tracker, but A is going to go pick that up right now. AA hitting the literal block in two. Had to go find that glove. Now he can go back and finish that off. 
It looks like uh, he's gonna stop off in town first. Now Zarnax gets to mess up the horse riders. Uh, not playing fair. Keeps retreating off of the edge of the screen, but Zarnax deals with him to the tune of 700 experience. And he's going to place the gem. Looks like, uh... Palace 3 in the books for Zarnax. And done for Niren as well. Thurwolf taking a death. And that, uh, that attack level 3 is uh, definitely hurting him. fight very cautiously. Attacking almost exclusively with downstabs. It's the way to go. Nice positioning. The iron knuckle. 700 experience, and he is 20 away from getting the next level, but he's about to run into the second of the two back to back. I don't think he's ready for this. taking a death, unfortunately. And Nirm having the trophy, pulling that one out of uh, Palace 2, uh, gave him the Reflect spell. So that's uh, that must have been what happened uh, off-stream here. Ooh, AA getting blasted uh, on the way to the boss. Just not playing nice with the enemy positioning here, but he's got enough. With a full magic meter, this should be a different story. Make short work of the magician, and he's going to pick up attack 7 off of this. So, very, very good job on sort of floating the experience through the entire dungeon, making it through on Magic 3 and Life 3.
Taking another trip back to Maze Island, and with the glove in hand, can get revenge on Palace too. Thurwolf sneaking through that locked door there. And Nirim is going to finish off the boss of four here. Leaves him just shy of getting the attack six upgrade. Oh, looks like life was the uh, the big prize. So places another gem. You're making pretty good progress. Zarnax finishing off what I believe is Palace 2. And if you are a fan of the Zelda 2 vanilla game or the randomizer. Uh, you can find some more information there if you'd like to try it out yourself. And feel free to join the Discord as well. Thurwolf picking up attack level 4. And it's going to pick up that magic container as well. Probably head on out of there. And now Nier is going to make it through these blocks, which uh, stymied AA earlier. Ooh, AA taking a death to a bubble. But still has two lives. And attack level 7, so... Should be in pretty good shape. Finds a 50p bag, worst prize. And now Zarnax headed in as well. Say hello to Helmet Head, attack seven, say goodbye to Helmet Head. A blowing him up. And there's attack level eight. So very, very good job by AA floating all of that experience. like he's going to elect to use the experience to boost the rest of the stats. So there's life 7 right now. And there's magic 5. So 757 seven, pretty good set of stats to get ready for the end game with. 
Zarnax sitting at all sixes, Nirm sitting at six five six. And if you like what you see so far, please uh, follow the runners, uh, all the featured runners. Uh, definitely worthwhile uh, to watch as far as uh, not just Zelda 2 randomizer runners, but uh, runners in general. Highly recommend all of their channels. And Nirm is going to set this gem up, and that'll be attack level 7. Looks like Nirm was trying to do the uh, fairy screen wrap, but uh, couldn't quite get it, so I'm just going to take the long way up. Now Zarnax is going to place the gem for two. Meanwhile, Thurwolf uh, barreling his way through one, and uh, going to have a fight with Horsehead over here. Oof. Gets it done. And uh, AA is going to find the uh, 700 experience blue iron knuckle. Meanwhile, Zarnax digs the trophy out of two. So that trophy we know from uh, Nirm Stream is going to free up Reflect. And Zarnax immediately warps back to go trade that in. You're checking out what's on the other side of the invisible wall. And there is Reflect. Looks like Thurwolf is, uh, Cutting through the mountain here. And we'll see. Finds Grand Palace at the end of the mountain path, so. Nothing to do there right now, and he's just gonna warp back to start.
And now Zarnax is going to head into four. You're dipping out and then going right back in again. AA looks like he's taking on Palace 6 right now. Looks like uh, this is three. A making short work of that blue iron knuckle. Gets the 700 experience. And it's about to get the back to back fights. So, yes, this is actually six. immediately recognizes that, hey, this seems suspicious, and he's just going to take a walk. So right now, Zarnax, AA, and Nirm are pretty well set statistics-wise to take on the endgame. Uh, Equipment-wise as well, just have to place a couple more gems. Third Wolf, unfortunately, finding the glove late, it's going to take him a little while longer. And Nirm finds Guma. Gives him a few jabs to the belly and he goes down. And with this gem placement, that's attack level 8. So good job by Nirm as well to manipulate the level ups, uh, even though he was kind of on the border for a couple of those. Uh, all worked out in the end. And now he is headed straight up to Grand Palace. So it looks like he finished uh, level one off stream. Zarnax finishing off five as well. And AA about to put six in the books. Going with the upstab strat. Meanwhile, Thurwolf is going to pick up Thunder.
All right, Nirm into GP, first one of our runners on stream. And immediately runs into some spicy chickens. And in this room full of lava, he's just going to use the fairy spell. Can't say I blame him. Lots of nasty stuff in the uh, GP, and he's going to take the drop here. And start heading right. And uh, he's just going to clip through that wall there. Takes the drop and keeps on going right. And the trend of always going right, paying off and navigating the Grand Palace as he's found Thunderbird. But he may not have enough magic to, uh, yep, takes a death here for the magic refill. Unfortunately, not enough magic to cast Thunder here. Yeah, that is a very, very expensive Thunder, even at magic 5, 92. And between that and the shield, the magic bar is empty. But Nier made it down here with all th three lives and had to drop only one for the refill, so he's in good shape for this and Dark Link. And given this is a short Grand Palace, Dark Link should be just around the corner. And it looks like we're bringing in Rose City Saint, who, when we last checked in, uh, had three gems set. So we'll try to uh, get the tracker fixed on that. Meanwhile, Zarnax is about to take out the boss of four. Gives him a little something to reflect on. And he's going to set this gem for attack level seven on the way out. So seven, seven, eight. Also not too bad to finish the game up with. And near continuing the always head right trend, but sees a hallway that he does not like and is going to try to go left to go right again. And is he going to take the drop? Is it planning on it? And those spicy chickens uh, don't change his mind. Meanwhile, Rose City Saint, gonna blow up Helmet Head. That's very, it. very quick fight. And uh, Nirm is gonna take a quick break for some chicken and waffles here. And it looks like the chicken and waffles decided to have him instead. Uh, this room can be particularly nasty, especially when you don't have any resources to get through it. Uh, with a full magic meter, the jump uh, spell is going to allow him to just skip both of these uh, pretty nasty groupings here.
And right now, Zarnax is right behind him, but uh, Nirm's navigation through the first part of uh, the pre-Thunderbird part of Grand Palace has given him a bit of an edge. And we'll see if the right direction uh, turns out to be the correct one. Zarnax hoping for a red jar summons a spicy chicken instead, and he's just going to hightail it out of there. Nirm takes the elevator up and is going to keep going right. Does not like what he sees. Meanwhile, AA is going to give Guma the old gut punch, and Rose City Saint has everything he needs to get into Grand Palace, so three into Grand Palace right now. And thank you to Jam Eviler for the host. Much appreciated. So Zarnax taking the drop and heading right, and uh, I think he's going to find Thunderbird pretty quickly this way. Yep, and now it's Zarnax's turn. Uh, and rather than take the death here, he's going to look to see if he can get a red jar real quick. Uh, finds a red chicken instead, so not what he was looking for. And there's that red jar right there. So full magic for Zarnax, and he's just going to roll into this Thunderbird fight fully prepared now. Meanwhile, Nirm trending right again, finding some curtains. Is this the right hallway? It is! And just as RCS gets to the entrance, Nirm finds the end. All he has to do is take out Darkling. One little notch of health left, but near not even worried. Handles it like an old pro and puts that one in the books. Finishes in first place with a time of 114.57. So GG to Nirm. Dark Link. Trying his best, but just not good enough. And now uh, RCS finds Thunderbird pretty quickly. Oh, but takes a bump. Probably on purpose. Doesn't Now he has uh, full magic for Thunder. And AA is just getting savagely beaten by Spicy Chickens.
and we'll try to bring Kaba in here right now. RCS needs just one more hit on Thunderbird, but uh, Thunderbird is not leaving too much of an opening here. Gets the job done, though. And... Looks like AA took a death outside of Great Palace and is going to have to start over. Uh, meanwhile, uh, RCS knows that Thunderbird is required, so he's going to have to keep going. And we'll see where this uh, roundabout path takes him. Zarnax, meanwhile, finding some curtains. And he may be on the right path here. It's looking like it. A.A. popping the slime on the way through the door. And now it's Zarnax's turn against Dark Link. And he's going to play it safe. Hide out in the corner and do some uh, knee stabbing. while AA finds Thunderbird. And Zarnax takes out Dark Link. So, Zarnax finishing with an official SRL time of 117.52. GG to Zarnax, our second place finisher. AA taking a couple of cracks at Thunderbird while RCS still exploring the uh, post Thunderbird portion of the Grand Palace. Takes the drop here. And feels a little bad going left, but uh, he has found the correct path, the Dark Link at this point. And we're bringing in another runner right now. A Rose City Saint into the fight against Dark Link. Only has attack level 6, but shouldn't be too much of a problem. And Rose City Saint also electing to play this fight safe and make short work of Dark Link. Finishing in third place with the SRL time of 119.45. So GG to Rose City Saint. Bringing back in Thurwolf. And we're joined by Zarnax. GG to you, Zarnax. Thanks. So, how did you uh, feel after making that uh, early Death Mountain play? Oh man, I was, I was, I felt really good. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I was also like, I knew that it would, that the the more of the seed that I had was still required. Like, I still knew I needed. Um, at that point, I knew I needed the Raft and Reflect and Thunder. Um, there's always a good chance you're going to need one, one or more of the spell items. Um, and so I knew the more of those things that were going to be required, um, the, uh, the more that would lessen the, my advantage. Um, and yeah, it, it, it's, it's too bad. 
because the trophy was in what Palace Two. Yeah. Um. So yeah, I dug all the palaces in the West, and I probably spent a little more. I mean, I don't know that it was the wrong decision. And actually, interestingly, um, I wouldn't have been able to do that if I didn't have the glove. Um, so yeah, getting the items out of three and six may have, have actually cost me. I mean, that's that's the way the randomizer goes. Sometimes that works out for you, sometimes it doesn't. But still, being okay. able to... Being able to clear that much area in 117 is uh, pretty impressive. The uh, the experience rules were extremely generous. That helped a lot. <laughs> um, I think I had like three, three, three in like four minutes. So yeah, the. Uh... Seed was not a particularly difficult one, combat-wise, um, just because you had so many resources. The overworld is pretty interesting. It took me a while, like... So once I had the glove, obviously, my... I, I, uh, and then I got the spells in Raru and um, Saria. And then my immediate plan was to try and find all four towns in the east. Um, just to find out as soon as possible whether or not I was going to need a spell item. And finding those towns in the east took quite a bit longer than I expected. And we've got AA finishing right now with a time of 122.48 in fourth place. So GG to AA. So is there any uh, any one area that uh, you remember uh, you got particularly stuck at, or does this feel like a pretty smooth seed for you overall? Uh, and yeah, besides what I was yeah um, was saying about the east, just looking like exploring the east was uh, it was it was not the most straightforward continent and. Like, uh, it was kind of weird, the, uh, Nuka Sudo, I think, is what really tripped me up. It was kind of, it was in the northwest of the southern section of the continent, so it was really easy to miss. Like, if you go too far north and you're above it and the mountains kind of blocked it off so you couldn't see that there was somewhere to go south of and uh, Kaba picking up the hammer right now, and we're joined by uh, Rose City Saint, GG. Uh, thank you, guys. How are you? Doing well. How are you? Uh, doing all right. Uh, I was a little disappointed to find the glove where I found it, but the rest of the seed was pretty friendly other than that. Yeah, GG. Thanks, you too. Yeah. So, uh, the glove was the first item I found. You're kidding. <laughs> no. So, so to be that close is is really good. That is remarkable. The glove I had the glove narrowed down to either three six or hammer cave. It was there was the last thing I looked for. <laughs> At least you yeah, beat man. me by more than eight seconds this time. I, I can I can sleep a little easier knowing that. <laughs> when it comes down to a snipe, those are a, a little more of a bitter pill to swallow. I'd rather lose by a lot, I guess. <laughs> yeah, I know what you mean. So Went right for Hammer Cave this time, did you? I, yeah, I uh, I popped in there and I think I saw. I decided to like check the initial caves, and then I saw that the I think one of the first caves I jumped in had an orange Dyra, and I was like, "Well, I want to find out how much these are worth." And it was one fifty, so I'm like, "I'm gonna stick around here and see if I can find some more of them." This was a very experienced, generous seed. They had 500-point drippers. That's what uh, I was saying. Uh, I didn't grind them very long, but I took a couple of levels off of it. I didn't find them until I was like 677. Oh, wow. I think I, I finished at 678. 
Yeah, it seemed like you were able to get quite a lot of experience just along the way. Uh, a couple of those boss fights, the back-to-back -back boss fights, and six giving uh, 700 each. Yeah. Yeah, the beginning of the seed was generous, too, with experience. They're 200-point red dyras. The The first thing you found was a trophy cave with a 500-point pea bag. You were at 223, mm -hmm. two, you know, right out of the chute in the first two minutes. Yep. Looks like we've brought uh, Thurwolf, Kaba, and uh, Victor Santa Fe back on the stream right now. And Thurwolf and Victor are still digging out six right now. With Kaba joining them. Thanks for the restream. Thanks for the commentary. And G, good, good game. To all the racers, but I gotta run. All right, thanks, Zarnax. Good game. Thanks for stopping by, Zarnax. GG again. Thanks a lot. See you Thursday. All right, you know it. And Thurwolf taking an unfortunate death, uh, and then is going to take the drop soon after. Looks like everybody is in Palace 6 right now, huh? It's the place to be. <laughs> it was the, this was one of uh, two items in the game that I didn't collect, the one in Palace Six. So I think it was a magic container, if I remember correctly. That's very. It was either the magic container or the horn. Now Thurwolf gets to fight the boss. I always like to see how guys fight Barbara. You know, it's interesting. You can go very, very aggressive or very, very slow. He really lets you show off what you're made of. Yeah, noticed uh, a lot of the uh, the runners that finished uh, early decided to play it safe. Yeah, I personally don't go for yak hammer on Barbara. I'm, I'm not good enough at it. I like to cash jump when I can, and I try to get about seven shots per cycle. And as long as you're more than attack four, that'll that'll do the trick quick enough. And Sir Wolf getting it done. Victor taking an unfortunate dip in the lava. And uh, I was just going to use the fire spell to transmute those, uh, those iron knuckles. Not taking any chances this time around.
And Victor now making it to the boss. I see based on the tracker here that just about everyone has the glove, even though there's still several palaces incomplete for some of these guys. That's interesting. I like I, everyone went straight for Hammer Cave, didn't they? Uh, so, as far as I know, uh, uh, Nier did a lot of overworld exploration before making it back to Hammer Cave. Same with uh, AA. Uh, the newer runners, uh, we just brought them on stream, so we're trying to get the tracker up to date right now. Gotcha, yeah. I always like to hold off on Hammer Cave until it kind of proves to be necessary. Uh, hearing Zarnax, though, he went right for it right before doing anything. That was That's kind of gutsy. I, I consider that to be a bit of a gamble. Not Maybe not reckless, but it's it's definitely gutsy. That... Yeah, I definitely uh, I consider it an aggressive play as well, but it, uh, it paid off. Uh, but Nirm's approach also paid off in uh, having a lot more resources to make it through to Hammer Cave uh, more effectively. So I think both approaches worked out, just uh, it's a matter of whether you like playing it safe or like playing it aggressive. I almost decided to do Palace 3 before I went into Death Mountain. That, that's how much I like to avoid it. Here we have another barba fight. Victor going steady and safe. Well, better to play it safe, uh, especially with uh, attack level 4. Gets the job done. So did you uh, find anything uh, tricky about the uh, overworld this time, or did it feel pretty straightforward? No, this was one of the easier overworlds I've been a part of. Uh, I, you don't need any connector caves in, in either continent at all. Everything was available to you right off the bat, and uh, it was very helpful after you get the boots on the eastern continent to uh, be able to walk around the, the whole perimeter of the map uh, right on the water so there was a you would have avoided a lot of encounters that way too this 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 was a, a very easy overworld all the towns you needed were right right near the start um that area on the eastern continent up by maze island had all the towns you would look for you know right there very very easy it looked like you were able to get uh, a lot of good resources at the start. Uh, downstab, early, fairy spell, early. Yeah, early fairy spell is always welcome. We did a seed the other night um, where the game given you fairy right off the bat, but you couldn't cast it until magic five, and it was required to get the raft out of the six. So that was a very interesting seed. Um, you needed to do some very unusual leveling strats uh, to, to be able to get the raft. Interesting. So what was your approach on that seed? Well, the first thing I did was I went into Palace 2, and, you know, the, when the game gives you fairy, that's like its way of telling you you can do palaces now, but you still couldn't cast it, but you had to do, you had to do a palace anyway, that's just the way it went. I came across the magic key, so that was at least a little bit handy, uh, for navigating palaces, but you, you had no choice but to but to grind. You had to forego attack levels that you would normally take in order to get that fairy spell up. 
you, you knew you needed it. There was a, a required, uh, you know, the, the long room in P6 where it's just all lava with a couple of drippers. That was required yeah. to get to the raft. Uh, oh, gotcha. And so finally at attack five, you could cast it. It went from being completely uncastable to dirt cheap and the jump from four to five. <laughs> of course. Yeah, very, very unusual. I don't remember seeing one like that before. Some beginning players, they refuse to even take Magic 4, let alone Magic 5. They want to keep Magic at 3 and Life at 4 and try to uh, get the experience points north of that so they can place a gem for a high attack level, you know? That's the attack leveling strats that vanilla players use. I don't recommend doing that in Rando. And that seed I was just mentioning is a great example of why. In Rando, it's a good idea to take those levels as they come. Uh, if, if you save levels like uh, vanilla players do to try to bolster your attack as quickly as possible, you can make the end of the game easier, but I feel like it makes the beginning and the middle easier if you take the levels as they come. A uh, question in chat, does Victor have only one gem placed? Uh, Victor has more than that placed, but I haven't gotten to see uh, what other gems uh, or what other palaces. It's like Kaba took a fight uh, or a death against uh, Barba, so he's going to have to try that again. Shout out to Kaba who plays with a keyboard. I think that's incredible. Oh, wow. I could never attempt to play this game with a keyboard. I, you know, you can do Dragon Warrior or uh, Final Fantasy with a keyboard, maybe, but not this. And Victor picking up the trophy in two. Well, Thurwell finishes off Guma. I did not know that Cobb employed keyboard strats. That's it's very impressive. I, I didn't believe it when I heard it at first myself. I had to ask him, and he confirmed it. So it looks like from uh, that quick pause that Victor did that he has four gems in total. And uh, is on his way to place the fifth right now. Meanwhile, I'm really glad to see some new players playing Z2R. Yeah, it's always nice to see, uh, for any randomizer, uh, new blood getting into the community. Yes, especially ours. Uh, the, the Z2 randomizer community is really pretty small, so... It's been important to us to try to drum up new interest with new players, and uh, so far it's been a lot of fun. They've been joining us for our weekly races and uh, taking an interest. Uh, Angry Larry made a great series of tutorials for uh, new players. I recommend anyone watching who hasn't tried it or is new to the game to check those out. And uh, for for those new players that are listening, uh, would you mind uh, talking about the weekly races? Yeah, we do a uh, we do a Tuesday night weekly that you're watching right now, nine o'clock Eastern. Um, that is restreamed by Randomania, and we also play every Thursday night at eleven p.m. Uh, those are usually restreamed on Speed Gaming. So come check those out if you haven't already. And uh, if, if you know how to play a little bit, please feel free to join us.
there's also several other games throughout the week just uh just pick up and play games that are sort of thrown together spur of the moment And where's the uh, best place to hear about those games? The Z2 Discord? Yeah, yeah there's a Zelda 2 Speedruns Discord. Just check out the Randomizer channel. Yep, so just uh, follow that uh, if you're interested. Uh, grab the uh, Discord invite that uh, Norestra just posted there. Kaba finishing off uh, Palace 6. And it looks like he is the uh, first of our runners to have uh, attack eight. Most everyone else finished up with seven, I believe. Yeah, with those drippers in P2 and P5, the sky is the limit for this one. You could get to 888 without too much problem. Thurwolf gets set up in the corner and uh, finishes off Palace 4 pretty quickly. And Victor is at the end of 2 right now. And down goes Helmet Head. He had a very low health roll on this seed. I think I, it took me three shots on Helmet Head, if I remember. Yeah, he got uh, steamrolled by pretty much everybody. More so than usual. I thought the trickiest part of this seed was finding the second item on Maze Island, to tell you the truth. As I'm looking at Victor's screen and he's on Maze Island, uh, there was one dead end where there was only two tiles beyond an encounter tile. So that's obviously that's always something you would just turn around and ignore. But lo and behold, it was one of those two tiles held the second item. So that was that was a bit trolly. And for a guy who spent the whole seed looking for the glove. That that was sort of a thing for me at the time. I think all I held was a uh, magic container, or maybe it was a heart container. I don't remember. Either way, it was nothing too terribly useful. Yeah, I think it was one of those two. Uh, but yeah, just uh, most people uh, did not find the glove as early as Zarnax did. Uh, so... One time, uh, aggression pays off this seed. And Thurwolf yeah, like, is... like I was, I was saying earlier, I had a race with Zarnax earlier this week, and he beat me by eight seconds. Oh, that's rough. Yeah, it is. The, like I said, this in this case here, he beat me by a couple of minutes. So I, that's that's a little bit, a little bit easier to take. Oh, the snipes always feel bad, because then you go back and wonder, you know, like, the one inefficient thing I did just really sticks in your craw. I know, you can think of a dozen of those. While I was racing this seat, I had to take a quick bathroom break, and that's very unlike me, but, you know, it had to happen, so... At least if, if, I, if I had lost by 30 seconds, I, I would have been pretty salty, but I, I, can, I can rest easy. Lost by way more than that. And now into the Grand Palace goes Thurwolf. So how did you feel about uh, navigating the Grand Palace this season? This one was m maybe average or a little worse than average. Um, uh, there's the old adage that you should go left at Fairy Room even though the meta tells you to try to go right. And so, you know, you follow the right, and we, as we see right here, Thurwolf Th Th comes up on the dead end. And then I explored the the other path, which is 
No good either. Um, in other words, the the Great Palace just forced you to take one too, one too many lefts for my liking. It also, as we'll see in a few minutes, um, forces you to take a drop after T-Bird, which is very uncomfortable to do. It's sort of like GP 101 to try not to drop after T-Bird because that can loop you back around. But uh, in this case here, it was necessary. Yeah, it seemed like getting to uh, T-Bird was not too bad, but then uh, some uncomfortable decisions after that. Yeah, exactly. So, you know, some guys have different schools of thought on if they if they want to get T-Bird out of the way really early so they don't have to worry about conserving magic, and then others want T-Bird closer to the middle um, so they can use his room as a, as, a, as a halfway marker so that they know that they're going the right way. Yeah. Um, and for me, that all depends. I, Depending on how prepared I am to fight T-Bird, the better prepared I am, the later I'd like to face him. If I'm very underprepared, like if I only have five heart containers or something, or no shield spell or something like that, then you want to face him nice and early. So that if you, if you die and have to up an A or whatever, that you can, you can do so without having to do too much backtracking. This room we see Thurwolf in uh, made me say some curse words to myself with these two guys. They absolutely pummel you as you try to work through this waffle room, and the lag is terrible. I always get a kick out of the, uh, the UI freaking out because of the lag. It makes you make funny faces. Like, <laughs> it's unavoidable. As their wolf taking a little bit of a beating there, is going to go grab the fairy and, uh... Seems like one of those rooms where it wouldn't be a bad idea to just ferry straight through. Yeah, the cost of ferry is low in this case. I would, yep. finding T-Bird, but he's got to go get a, a red jar real quick. Yeah, there's always the debate if you should go back for the red jar or just take a quick death abuse. In this case here, he gets his jar pretty quickly, so he'll be happy with that. If you go back two, three times and keep finding a bird knight, then he'll just wish you took the death abuse. So what are the chances on that? 50-50? They say they're 50-50, but boy, it feels worse than that. <laughs> when, when you're in a pinch and you need that jar, y you never get it. I had a situation where, you know, in P6 during this seed, I, um, I needed that red jar out of the room where you can drop and it goes left and right and there's the, the bird statue um, right above the drop. And I tried to farm that statue for, um, for a red jar because I knew there was a fairy required path that you had to take just after that. And uh, I couldn't get it. I think I did it three times. I wasted all my magic on jump trying to get enough magic to cast fairy. Um, so that was a real pain. I had to waste about a minute and take a death abuse uh, in order to have the magic I needed.
That was a good T-Bird fight there by Thurwolf. Yeah, made it through uh, pretty smoothly, and now time to uh, take a bunch of rights that don't matter. Yeah, I don't remember the exact path, but I remember thinking to myself there were two or three very unappealing looking lefts or a drop that you could take. Which, like I said, is also sort of something you try to avoid after T-Bird, so... You have to choose between about three bad options. Yeah, Thurwolf out of magic tried to uh, muscle his way through that room, but uh, no dice. I would recommend Fairy and Shield and just pedal to the metal here. The lag in this room was terrible as well. Selecting not to take the drop, heads back to the left. All right, round and round we go. Skips the Eon drop. Speaking of lag. And Cobb is almost done with four. Just has to post up in the corner. Or he's going to take a death because not enough magic for a reflect. Okay, sorry if you lost me, I'm back. Alright, welcome back. Uh, just uh, not much you missed here, just uh, Kaba finishing up uh, four and about to head into the Grand Palace. Okay, very good. For whatever reason, my computer decided to do a quick uh, shut off of itself, so here we are. Not even one of those automatic updates just turned itself off. No, it just uh, no, it just made a chime and the screen went black. This is a new computer too. I mean, it's really terrific, except for that it does that sometimes. Well, I hope it's just a driver thing and nothing serious. Yeah, I don't know. I'll have to check into that.
Thurwolf's going to take the drop here and land in a very familiar room. Okay, I believe Thurwolf is on the right path now. Yep, took the necessary drop, and yeah, he is definitely going the right way now. Alright, time to be a little bit careful, he's on his last life. Plenty of resources to get through this fight, though. This this is an uh, underrated, annoying room. Anytime there's that much activity in those rooms, I like to just ferry through. And that's it. Thurwolf finishes in fifth place with a time of 158.05. Yeah, GG, Thurwolf. I'm glad to see a big player from the Zelda 1 community starting to play some Z2. It's very exciting. Yeah, Thurwolf, one of the uh, big names in Z1, and uh, it'd be great to see if he becomes one of the big names in Z2 as well. I've tried to make the crossover to playing Z1, except I'm very, very bad at it. All right, we'll try to get uh, Thurwolf into the Discord here. In the meantime, uh, Kaba makes it through that uh, very dangerous waffle room, only to find it dead end. And we're joined by Thurwolf. GG. Thanks. So I trolled myself in the beginning. How so? Uh, I missed the raft tile in P1, and I thought maybe I needed boots. So, yeah. Uh, I see. When, when did you get the glove? Was that something you did early? It is something I did relatively early, because I was looking for boots at the time, so I Dug out glove, and then I went into P3 and 6, thinking, okay, one of these has it. And they did not. Oh, okay. I had the exact opposite approach. The Death Mountain was the very last thing I did, so I, I didn't get the glove until very, very late. Well, I missed out on basically the Mago Drippers because uh, 2 and 5 were on East Continent, and I didn't get there until over an hour in, so that, that was a little sad. Yeah, they were pretty juicy out there, but uh, I only grinded them for just a minute. But I'm sure, I'm sure, plenty of other guys, the guys who finished ahead of me too, they, I'm sure they spent some time on those magos. I at the time I only spent a little, got like one or two levels because I'd already, you know, been playing for an hour. 
I, I appreciate P6's back-to-back Reapin' and with attack three, that was not great. Did you at least have downstab for that? I did get downstab, but they were taking forever, and they and I'm just not good enough to kill them quickly enough, I guess. So I I had some deaths. But I'll take sub two hours. Yeah, that was a nice run. And here we have Kababesh uh, fighting T-Bird now. We'll see how this goes for him. He's at 888, so he's as beefy as it gets here. It looks like he decided to cast Jump as well. Uh, do you prefer fighting T-Bird with or without Jump? I don't use Jump for T-Bird. I did when I was a kid playing this game, but as a randomizer player, I don't. Yeah, same for me. As a kid, I recall using it, but I just haven't had the practice with it, so might as well just stick without. He did a nice job, though. He got him first shot. Meanwhile, Victor is finishing off Carrick. Looked like he was pretty cooperative. What did you make of the overworld, Thierwolf? Oh, I got totally lost in West Continent, and uh, I'm very sad that the uh, flute was not required for East Continent. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I was pleased to see that this overworld didn't involve any mandatory pass-through caves. That's always, that's always one of the things I like to see when you can get to everything just, you know, just by walking. I'm just used to this game trolling me, so I was expecting a troll. Which, I guess, Glove and Death Mountain Hammer Cave, that was pretty pretty bad. Oh, yeah, it, it cost me for sure. It, it, it made me play the seed backwards, evidently. And, like, for example, I dug the item out of two, and you couldn't finish the palace because the boss was glove blocked there. So that, that's, you know, more time you had to waste backtracking for that. I did think that... Even though I had that whole mess up in the beginning where I kind of lost P1 and Raftile, getting the glove out of DM and not having to really backtrack, backtrack except to 6, which I wanted higher attack for. But other than that, I didn't really have to backtrack too much other than reflect for P4. When we got the fire spell, I thought that was reflect, and I was excited to have that until I realized, nope, it was spell spell. That was that was a real letdown. Yeah, I went into P4 and I'm like, okay, I'm going to test this to see if it's Reflect. First Doom Knocker, and he, then he turned into a bot, and I was very sad. <laughs> exactly. Kaba navigating the uh, second half uh, pretty well here. Just has to make it away from these chickens. Absolutely. Cast some life here, and you're good to go. There we go. All right, I'm going to head out. Uh, thanks for commentating and uh, restream, everybody. GG's. All right, GG. Right, thanks for stopping by, Thurwolf. Kaba putting the finishing touches on Dark Link. And he is done with a SRL time of 2.05.30. Kaba wants to say thanks to all the little people.
And again, if you liked uh, what you saw tonight, uh, please be sure to follow the runners. And uh, if you're interested in giving the Zelda 2 randomizer a try, uh, join the Discord. We've got Victor making it into Great Palace right now. He's going down the same rabbit hole we all did. Always go left at the fairy room. It's just a thing. Don't ask me why. The lag seems to be a huge problem in this room. Sometimes the lag can work to your advantage to try to maneuver through the enemy projectiles. Yeah, getting but, uh, a couple extra seconds to slowly make it through, but... Uh, and here we have the, the Olsen twins here that are trying to harass you on your way through the Waffle Room. Waffle room that leads to nowhere, but that one that everyone else went to. Yep, practically required. Invalid run if you don't go through this dead end. There we go. Run validated. <laughs> you know it. So it won't be long now before he finds Thunderbird. It's the path after Thunderbird that tells the story here. That's an unfortunate death. Especially depending on how much magic he has to use between here and T-Bird, because you may have to do another death abuse before T-Bird. His levels are pretty high, though, so probably not. And he uh, went the correct direction off the drop, so he's in good shape. Now, if T-Bird's uh, off the screen and you cast Thunder, do you still get the effect? No. 
<laughs> no, he, he has to be... Uh, you have to have, like, his entire face on the screen for it to count. I've done that before a couple times by accident. That is a real problem. Yeah, Victor cut it real close there. You almost never have enough magic to cast thunder twice. I mean, unless it happens to be, you know, fire tied to thunder. But assuming yeah. that's not the case, you only get one thunder per bar. And if you fail, <laughs> there goes one of your lives. We got a white knuckle situation here. Oh. Uh, Alright, last try. seems to be going a little bit better. Yeah, the pendulum is very messed up right now. It's important to get that back on track. Even if he dies after beating T-Bird, you still want to beat T-Bird so he stays dead for the next time you come through. One more hit. Uh-oh. Oh, no. Oh, no. That's, that's really disappointing for the reason I just mentioned. Now he has to fight T-Bird again. He was one hit away from not having to do that. Oh, that's rough, but at least he knows where he is now. And, you know, that drop room where he lost the life earlier, you can ferry through or jump through the false floor, and um, that might help save him a beating, too, if he realizes that and uh, wants to employ those strats. Yeah, it looks like he's not going to do that there, but uh, we saw near him earlier. Uh, just take the ferry straight through here. Depending on the enemy set, like this room we see has a very bad enemy set. That would make me want to just ferry right through. If it's a couple of small enemies that don't create lag, I'll, I'll upstab my way through. He has enough magic to cast Thunder, so he doesn't need a Death Abuse. And in fact, he's going back for even more magic. Gets what he's looking for, so well prepared for this fight. like he's doing a little uh, pause buffering <laughs> in between swings. Yeah, you can use the edge of the screen to reset T-Bird and make him move in that pendulum-like fashion so that it's convenient for you to hit him when he's, uh, when he's low in the center of the screen. 
You want them high on the edges and low in the middle. There we go, down to one hit now. Okay, he finishes him off. So basically, he can now follow every right that he comes to, and he'll find a drop. And as long as he takes that drop, he can't go wrong. But if the thought of dropping upsets him, he may be tempted to take one of the other lefts, and I think there's at least two. We'll see how he uh, decides to approach this room and not even waiting for the enemies to come out, just ferries right through. Absolutely, this is a terrible room. Okay. Moment of truth. And he decides to take a walk to the end of the screen. <laughs> it's just just dragging it out a little bit. All right. Just just wanted to, to demonstrate for any anyone new watching that that is in fact a dead end. It's got to prolong the drama and uh that yeah, would have been a good place for the glove, by the way. <laughs> I would have found it there at this at the same time as where I actually found it. All right, don't don't die, Victor. Just use life, please. There we go. All right, one more challenge to go. He's going with the tried and true stats of just backing up to the corner and wailing away. Nothing fancy. Hey, whatever works. Absolutely. And he's in seventh place with a time of 220.25. GG, Victor. And he makes a funny self-deprecating comment in IRC, as only Victor can. And uh, we'll see if we can uh, get him in here for uh, some thoughts before we wrap up. So again, if you liked what you saw, please follow the runners. Uh, their Twitch channels are listed there. And uh, if you're interested, 
playing Z2 Randomizer for yourself, you can find the Randomizer download in the Discord right there. And we're joined by Victor, GG Victor. Hey, thank you. Thank you for having me. <laughs> it was uh, a good seed, but I got dick shook several times. Yeah, I think we all did. That GP was not too fun, although you did a pretty good job handling it. You didn't You didn't really wander off into the wrong path at all. Well, I, I, I took the two rebels and behind them was a, a jar, so that was <laughs> pretty stupid and... Yeah, a lot of uh, pivax here and there, but but well, I, I I I this is the first official race I do under three hours because I'm a beginner, so I, I feel glad I, I finished it not too too long. It it didn't took me too long. No, you did a fine job. Um, you and Thierwolf and uh, and others, uh, amazing, totally improved new Zelda two player. Um, there is there is a whole new crop of players that are really rapidly improving so good job to you um i'm just curious when when did you get the glove did you get that earlier is that one of the last things you came across um, it was kind of late it, it I, I think before reflect it was my last necessary item uh, but, the the good thing is that I I think the good decision was taking palace two before taking the other uh, other palaces so so that, that I think it was in palace two right the, the, the glove the, no the glove was in death mountain oh in death mountain right yeah 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 uh, it was kind of late but but I don't think. It bad. I mean, I, I don't think it was a bad decision. I, I, I think I had to to find all uh, all the other overworld items before. That yeah, for, for me personally, the glove was one of the very last things I came across. I I had it narrowed down to either three six or Death Mountain, so I totally played myself. But there were other guys. Zarnax got it, uh, I guess, in the first five minutes. So it's funny how that works. Wow. So, you know, De Death Mountain is a cruel mistress. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. In in this game, it's all about choices, and sometimes you win, sometimes you get one ups and jars. Speaking of, of mistresses, tell tell us, do you have any Valentine's Day? What? <laughs> Tomorrow is Valentine's Day. Oh, I didn't even know. So you can <laughs> you can guess. I don't have any plans for tomorrow. <laughs> Oh yeah, that's okay. For me personally, I like to celebrate Valentine's Day the day after the Super Bowl. That's a good call out day. Everyone calls wow. out. That's a good day to take the wife to lunch and you know, uh, go do something special on that day, as opposed yeah. to some you know random Wednesday in the middle of the week. Yeah. Also, here in Colombia, uh, February 14 is not that much celebrated. We 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 celebrated more in in September. Oh no, kidding! That is interesting. Yeah, some some people do celebrate it tomorrow, but but not 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 a lot of people. Yeah. <laughs> well, thank you anyway for answering that question. <laughs> no, thank you guys for having me, and well, thank you also for for giving this space to the amazing Zelda Two Randomizer, which I dig uh, a lot, and, and Dick Shake has done an amazing job and and he's gonna have some updates these days so so absolutely we you know we can't hold anyone to anything but it sounds like there are rumors of a new big update to the zelda 2 randomizer coming very soon so stay tuned for that yeah yeah i'm pretty scared but at the same time i'm excited very good. Edgeworth, uh, do you mind if I plug the uh, the weeklies one more time? Oh, by all means, go ahead. Thank you. Um, check us out every Tuesday night, 9 o'clock, right here on Randomania. And also, Thursday nights, 11 p.m. Check that out on Speed Gaming. Um, we always have some good Zelda 2 randomizer action going. Uh, Plenty of old familiar faces, uh, some really good veteran players, and plenty of uh, plenty of new improving players too, getting better all the time. Check it out.
All right. And uh, before we wrap things up, uh, any final thoughts uh, from either of you before uh, we finish? No, I'm just eagerly anticipating that next update. And uh, I can't wait to see what Hidden Town and Hidden Palace look like on a randomizer. Yeah, thank you for having me. And yeah, I'm excited too. So uh, I'll see you next week and in the other uh, randomizer we're going to have on Thursday. So, well, thank you for having me again. And thank you for the commentary, Edgeworth, and the restream. Appreciate it for everyone who made this possible. Yeah, no problem. Thanks to the uh, Randomizer Mania crew for uh, pulling this together. Uh, thank you for watching, everybody. Again, if uh, you're interested in the Zelda 2 Randomizer, uh, please, uh, you can download it at that link you see in chat, and you can join the Discord uh, if you want to get in on the action. That'll about do it here. Thank you for watching, everybody. Tune in next week, uh, same time, if uh, you want to catch more Zelda 2 action. Have a good night.